Can, you can hear me fine, though, right? Fine. Excellent. All right. What is the theme of the Bible? John 20, 31. John 20, 31. And Alvaro, what is it? These are written. These are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ. is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. Excellent. One person going to heaven. No. Yay. <laughs> everyone else? I decided I'm, in the future I'm going to be calling on individuals rather than everyone. To Ooh. Do. So just be prepared. <laughs> so, whether you get into heaven or not, it's going to be dependent on whether you know this verse. You ready? These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing you may have life in his name. John 20, 31. Okay? I'm saying that that is the theme of the entire Bible. We're doing an overview of the scriptures. And I would say, what is the purpose of them? If anyone ever asked you, if you ever wondered why we even have a Bible. Well, this is it. These are written. These. These are written. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So that means whether we're studying Genesis, whether we're studying Exodus, or even Leviticus, in it are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that believing in him, you will have life in his name. Okay? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by him. Mm -hmm. So it behooves us to know who he is. And that leads us to our theme of Bible study. What is the goal of Bible study? To grow in grace and knowledge. Second Peter 3, 18, correct. What does that say, Nell? Grow in the grace and knowledge. Wait a minute, everyone's Nell? <laughs> Go as it say now. Only now. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen. Very good. Yes. The very last word that Peter ever wrote to us is this. Hi, everyone. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen. That is the reason I hope you are here tonight. Because this is my projection for this Bible study. In other words, this is the reason, the raison d'etre, as to why we are here. That we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do we grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? By grace and sacraments. Sacraments, right. The sacraments bestow grace from Jesus to us. How do we grow in the knowledge of Jesus? Scriptures. Scriptures and holy reading, yes. Holy reading mean like reading the lives of the saints. The, the encyclicals of the church, the catechism, okay? But the scriptures, I would say, are the primary way that we grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because if these are written that you may believe in him, well then, I better read them so I know what he is. I mean, doesn't that just make sense? I mean, to me, that makes sense. So that's why we're here. That's why I'm going through this overview. That's why you come, hopefully, is that you learn to love our Lord more, better. That is why, that we should grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. We get the grace from the sacraments. We get it through prayer and also through sacramentals, like miraculous medals or crucifixes that we wear, St. Benedict medals. Those, those predispose you for grace. They don't bestow it, but they open you to it. They give you, they remind you of being in that mindset to receive grace. The sacraments actually give you grace. 
And that's how you grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, by participating in the sacraments. But our knowledge comes from our Lord's letters that he's written to us. The years, the centuries that he has written this to us. That's why we're here. So, welcome everyone. Uh, we are in the process of answering uh, this section of Genesis about the flood and the story of Noah. So I'm using these questions as a form of review. So one of the first controversial questions of this story, this narrative, is who were the sons of God who married the daughters of men to produce the Nephilim? Who were they? From the book of Enoch? Yes. Yes, that's right. It, that's exactly right. That's one theory, that the, the word sons of God refers to angelic beings that somehow made it in some fashion with human women and produced the Nephilim. Nephilim is a Hebrew word. It simply means great ones. Great ones. It has been translated in the past as giants. Okay? But the word itself simply means great ones. Okay, so that's one theory. Tell me the other. Uh, the other is that um, the sons of God were the righteous sons of God upset um, and so the daughters of men were the sons of the daughters of Cain uh, and that these two lines mixed together in a way that was against God and everybody produces the others. Very good. That's it. That's the second competing theory. Very good. Another person going to heaven. Love it. We're populating heaven left and right. I love it. Um, the idea, and this is the, the theory that is promoted in the two books I'm having you read. Uh, it is Walking with God. Uh, this is the textbook that we are loosely going through by, Jim, uh, by Tim, Tim Gray and Jeff Cavins. Uh, which is the uh, Bible Adventure series. It's also the one that's promoted primarily in Scott Hahn's commentary, which is the primary commentary that we're using for Genesis. The idea that the sons of God and the daughters of men refer to a righteous lineage and an unrighteous or ungodly lineage, represented by Seth and Cain, and that they eventually intermingle, and as a result, they got, the righteous line got diffused, and as a result, violence filled the earth, wickedness filled the earth, and that precipitated the flood. That's what caused the flood. There were three character, this is not one of the questions, but I want to know, there are three characteristics of the flood. In other words, what caused the flood? Why did God destroy the world with the flood? Two are explicit in the Bible, one is implied. What's one of the explicit? Evelyn. Wickedness. Wickedness filled the earth. Wickedness filled the earth. Okay? You want to know where that is? That's Genesis 6. Uh, verse 5. Seven? Verse 5. 6, verse 5. Thank you. Uh, the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great, and that the, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So that was one of the causes that brought the flood. Wickedness. What was the other? Corruption. Violence. violence. Violence filled the earth. Okay? The earth was filled with violence. This is verse 11, chapter 6, verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. So those are the two explicit reasons why God decided to destroy mankind with the flood. What's the third unspoken but implied reason? Lack of repentance. Lack of faith. How do you know that? No one repented while well, Noah built the ark. No one repented. No one cared. They thought crazy old fool building this <laughs> boat in the middle of nowhere because God told him that the world was going to be destroyed. Right. 
How long did he, by the way, how long did it take him to build this thing? 100 to 120 years. So did people have time to repent? Yes. I think so. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Yeah, plenty. I'll do it tomorrow. 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 And guess what? Nada. There was a time in which tomorrow never came. The door of the ark was shut by God. Water came. And that was that. Time to repent is over. You've made your decision. Right? Well, there you are. There you are. How big was the ark? Five football field. Not five football field. 450 feet long. 450 feet long. How high was it? 75 feet. 75 feet, 75 feet and how wide? Like 50. 50. It was huge. It was a huge boat. Barge shaped thing. Now where do you get those dimensions? From God. From the Bible. The Bible specifically tells you how big it was. Why? Why did God put those dimensions in there? Who cares how big the boat was? Well, give us a visual of how big it was. Ah, yeah, that could be it. What else? He wanted it to be buoyant. He wanted it to be buoyant, yes. Yes. Um, it, it is, in this reporter's opinion, an evidence that the story is not merely to be taken as a fable or a moral lesson. If it was simply a fable or a moral lesson, why such a, an explicit detail about how big it was? The other flood legends around the world don't give dimensions of how big the boat is. That's very interesting. They don't give specific dimensions. They just said, build a big boat. So they did, and that's that. It's in the Bible that has these specific dimensions. Curiously enough, when you look at the dimensions, like I said, it's one by one by six, if I'm not mistaken. Which means, in terms of people who build boats and ships, means it was extremely buoyant. It was extremely buoyant. It was not prone to capsize. It was, it was built like an enormous barge to hold what? The whole world's animals and Noah and the food that they needed to survive the trip. Uh, this isn't a question, but how long did the flood last? How long were they in the ark? 40 days. 40 years. No. 40 years. 40 years. Over a year, yes. 371 days to be exact. 371 days. That's over a year. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. But that was just the beginning. They stayed in the ark for well over a year, according to the biblical record. They stayed in the ark for well over a year. Now, we're going to kind of, uh, we, I, we, we touched about this a little bit, but how did all the world's animals get onto the ark? How did they fit? Through the side door. Through the side door, that's cute, that's cute, I like it. <laughs> oh, there's a good question, though. How many doors were there in the ark? One. One. That is significant. There were not two doors. There wasn't a, a poop deck. There wasn't anything like that. There was one way to get on the boat. One. That is very important. That is not mere symbolism. Well, it is, but I mean, it, that's significant that that detail says there was only one entrance into the ark. One. How many entrances were there to get into the temple? One. 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 There wasn't a side door into the nave. No, no, no. no. In the Jewish temple and in the tabernacle that Moses built, there was one way to get in. One. That's important. Because when Jesus comes around and says, I am the way, I am the door, 
All those who came before me are as thieves and robbers. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is he saying? He's saying there's only one way that you're going to get to the Father, and that's by me. Just like there was one door into the ark, one door into the temple, one door into the tabernacle, there's only one way. It's a narrow way. Have you heard that before? Okay. Broad is the way, and great is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter by it. But enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and few are those who find it. We fail to remember that. Okay? That this is the one of, if nothing else, we as people of faith need to be grateful and thankful for this gift of faith that we have been given. That we've been, if you will, invited into the bark of Peter. And it is our responsibility to stay in that bark. The only way that we are going to be capsized is if we throw ourselves over the boat. God isn't going to do it. You do it yourself. Okay? But the only way in is by God. Only by Christ. One way. That's important. Um, we kind of went over this a couple of weeks ago. How could Noah care for all the animals? And where did they get all the food to feed them? God provides. God provides. I think that that's important to remember. This whole event was a miracle. You realize the flood, the destruction of the earth, the saving of, of Noah. You, you don't believe that God told him to go through all of this trouble and then he forgot about him and let him starve on the boat with the animals. I mean, that just, again, doesn't make sense. At the very least, God provided. Okay? But how could he take him and his family take care of all these hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of animals? Some of the animals went through hibernation. It's very, that's very good. It's very possible that a lot of them went into hibernation. I mean, you think about it. The boat wasn't illuminated from the inside. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have running water in there. It was not meant to be uh, the Queen Mary, you know, 